Okay, so for anyone who hasn't seen it yet, I recently put up a video on Mockrock that talks about some of the problems with zoners in Smash Ultimate specifically. And one of the things that I talked about was the lack of interesting anti-projectile tools in the game. So we're going to take a look at all of them today and see where I rank them in terms of design. This is not a power rankings tier list. A few bits of criteria to go over. This is only moves that have had very specific anti-projectile properties coded into them. So things like generic counters, jokers down B, even though they do have anti-projectile properties, are not not going to be included on here. I'm also skipping the Miis, and I'm not generally a Mii excluder, but let's be honest, their moves that would fit on this list are very, very similar to existing characters. And we're also evaluating the design of the entire move, not just how it handles projectiles, although that's obviously an important component. All right, let's do it. Okay, I might as well start with the original here, the one that's kind of used as a symbol for all reflectors in the series now, Fox's Shine, which is actually called Fox's Reflector. So obviously really infamous move in Smash 64 and particularly Melee before Brawl and Smash 4 pretty much gutted it. In Ultimate, they did bring back a little bit of interesting utility for it. It works okay as an edge guarding tool. It's not great, but you can do some like kind of cool flashy stuff with it. Still obviously a shadow of its former self, and as far as all the options in the game go, it's pretty simplistic and generic, and honestly, I think if they were going to make Ultimate a faster game, like if that was one of their goals, I think bringing back a little bit of Reflector's utility would have been warranted. So I think we're gonna go C tier for this one. Like. It's just okay. Like, it, not only is it just okay, but it's just okay in a way that's kind of disappointing compared to some previous entries, and they had the opportunity to do more with it than they chose to. Let's just continue on with the rest of the space animals. Falco. Uh, A tier for this one. Yeah. Falco's Reflector is one of the absolute best traditional anti-projectile reflection moves in the game, and it does some really cool things because of that kick. Like. It's obviously not going to cause a lot of combos or anything along those lines, but in terms of edge guarding, neat little pokes, cool plays, like, obviously a lot of Falco fans from Melee were upset that his reflector got changed so dramatically. I mean, it's one of the most iconic moves in Melee, but they needed to differentiate Falco significantly more from Fox. I'm generally a fan of doing that for every semi-clone, even popular ones. And as time went on, it's just become more and more clear to me that they made the right decision with Falco. I really like how his reflector works. Is it... S tier. Yeah, you know what? No, I changed my mind. You can see I haven't thought this out beforehand. We're putting Falco's Reflector in S tier. I really like this move. It strikes this fine line where you never really need to use it offensively, but it's very viable too, so how much you choose to is a big part of your style, which is just a really cool trait for a move like this to have. Then rounding things off with Wolf. Um, so Wolf's, it's cooler than Fox's. Um, Basically, how they handled this move moving from Brawl to Ultimate, they changed the hitbox to activate from when you put the reflector down to when you put it up, which sort of makes it a little bit of an analog to Falco's older reflector alongside the, like, you know, popping up angle. But they didn't do that much with it. You can get some true combos with it, which is cool, don't get me wrong, but... It seems like it's just always a hair away from being the really cool combo move I was kind of hoping to see with it initially. Uh, that doesn't mean that it's badly designed per se. It, look, Wolf doesn't have problems with combos as is. I just think moves like this are really cool to incorporate into combos and they could have pushed it a little bit further. It's possible that's unfair. It's me asking it to do something it was never really designed to do. And it is a pretty good actual reflector move, especially since you can jump cancel after you reflect something, which actually leads to more combos. So we're going to go... We'll go B tier for this one. Like... It's solid, it's cool, like the combos that it can do and the mix-ups that it can do are really neat, but I just, if they'd pushed it a little further, just a little more, it would be A tier easily. Let's get away from reflectors for a bit. Uh, Link's shields, so we'll do all three of them there. So Link, Young Link, Toon Link, B tier. They're fine. It's a cool idea, and the fact that it's been in the series for so long is actually, you know, a little bit of a step outside the box in a way that you wouldn't necessarily expect off the top of your head. Hang on, let me rearrange these ones a bit. Yeah, so I like the way the shields work. I like that there are still some blind spots that you can work around. I like that crouching makes your body get covered more. So 
in theory, I really like this kind of walk slash crouch dynamic to get around projectiles. It's not at its best in Smash, though. Dashing is just so key in this game, and you always hear people talk about how, oh, everyone should walk more, and that's true to a degree, but let's be honest, running and in Ultimate especially, jumping is a really big deal. So the times where you're just kind of slowly inching your way towards your opponent, putting up your shield, um, not as common as in something like a traditional fighting game. I think in a lot of traditional fighters, this ability would be kind of busted, honestly, but in Smash doesn't really have nearly as much of a home, but the design is still cool, so yeah, B tier. Let's talk about the slightly more dubious moves. So, generally speaking, I'm not including counters on this list unless they have reflection abilities, which some of them do, but Bayonetta's, I think, is reasonably fair to put on here because it does have a different um, aspect of it in the code specifically to deal with projectiles and in a balance patch that actually got changed, so I think she's fair game. Um, we'll do... God, Witch Time this is opening a can of worms. You know, we're going to do C tier for Witch Time. So this is not the Smash 4 version. Smash 4 is one of the most poorly thought out moves of all time. I really do not know why it was allowed to exist in that form. But Ultimate Solution was just to nerf the duration so much that it turned it into what was functionally just kind of any other counter. Like... Yeah, you block a move, you get Witch Time, and then you smash attack them. Like, that's really most of what you're able to get. Maybe you can do a single hit or two to get a combo setup started, but... Smash 4 was really overpowered, but it was also really interesting and exciting, whereas... Yeah, Ultimate Witch Time... It's not really anything to write home about. Even, like, the projectile interaction, I guess, is kind of cool, but it's not, again, like, anything particularly spectacular. And Bat Within is stupid. Like, Bat Within is one of the worst character-specific mechanics I think we've ever seen in a Smash game, and the fact that it activates off Witch Time 2 is not doing the move any favors. Lucario and Greninja. So, I'll admit, these ones are cheating just a little bit. They don't technically have projectile interactivity specifically, but they do have a very long zoom after you counter a move, and there's no real reason for that zoom to exist other than the fact that they can be used against projectiles, so we're gonna let them just slip in here. And I actually think both of these moves are quite cool, so A or B... I actually would put this one in A. Yeah, I really like how Lucario's counter works, and we're gonna do the same thing with Greninja. Greninja was a little bit of a weaker design in Smash 4, but in Ultimate they gave it like a stalling property when the move connects, like a really prominent stalling property your opponent actually freezes in place, that even applies after you counter a projectile, so yeah, I really like how both these moves work, and they... They're not the most obvious A placements in the world. I think you could make a fair argument for them in a lot of different spots, but me personally, I'm comfortable with them there. It feels a little bit weird awarding the first A's to the ones that don't actually have direct projectile interaction, but what can you do? Balance things out with some differently handled moves in the series. Pits Upper Dash Arm, Dark Pits Electroshock Arm, F. F, 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 F for these things. I hate the way these moves are designed. So I'll forgive you for not knowing this, the pits aren't particularly popular characters and these aren't particularly popular moves in their kits, but yeah, they actually do have reflection properties and it's absolutely terrible. Probably the worst one in the game. That angle that they send at is never going to hit anyone. And the thing is, if you changed either aspect of them so that they either just didn't have a reflection property or had a reflection property that sent where it's supposed to send and where basically every other projectile reflection sends, they'd be good. If they didn't have a reflection property at all, then no problem. You could just use the armor to power through projectiles, which is a major way that armor is used in Smash. The armor is actually just super poorly designed on these moves in general because it comes out on the second frame of activation, not the first frame, which means it's really easy for them to lose to moves they should absolutely be beating. You could maybe make the argument that's a balancing factor, but the thing is, it already has a built-in balancing factor. It's really slow and horrendously unsafe if it whips, which for a big, powerful armor move is really well designed in my book. There's no reason to tack on that extra frame of startup vulnerability. Something like Captain Falcon's Raptor Boost has that same property, and you could make a better argument for it there because that one is actually pretty safe on shield and generally has higher reward, but I would still just say it's a dumb thing for armor moves to have in general. If you land an armor move when an opponent tries to attack you, 
you've won. You've made the correct decision and should be rewarded for that decision. And obviously if it just reflected normally, great, then it's just another reflector move, which you may argue that the pits don't need because they already have a reflector move, which speaking of which, let's do that. The Guardian Arbitars I'm much more on board with in general, and I'd actually say they've been handled pretty well in Ultimate overall. They have a lot of utility built into them because they're so fast to start up and shut down, but they also have some pretty fair weaknesses between being able to hit them from below or above, and also the fact that the Arbitars shrink the longer they're held out. And of course, if you can just correctly call it out in a juggling scenario, then it's pretty easy to either grab them or punish them when they start going back down after they land. I will say that their feet are probably a little bit too vulnerable, at least to scenarios where you can just kind of hit them even though you really shouldn't have been rewarded for throwing out an option in that scenario, but overall, I think they're pretty reasonably handled. King K. Rule and Palutena. We'll kind of throw these ones together as the traditional counters that also have reflecting properties on them. It's not happening, is it? Something came up. I actually think I'm going to rank these ones a little bit differently, so King K. Rule is going to go in A tier, and Palutena is going to go in B tier. King K. Rule, it's actually a really cool thing to have in his kit, because he's a heavyweight and he's a zoner, and both of them, but the heavyweight in particular, really benefit from having a move like this on their kit. And he also uses his gut really heavily in his moveset, and the counter only activates if you hit him in the gut, so I really like the way they've handled that one. Palutena, not nearly so crucial to her design, although it was kind of a clever workaround for folding some of her multiple moves into a single move so they could fold one of her custom moves from Smash 4 into her core moveset. Like, neat, I like that decision, but how it actually functions in Ultimate is nothing particularly interesting, and she'd be totally fine without this move. Rosalina's down B, actually gonna get the same treatment as King K. Rule, that's an A tier from me. I know a lot of people get really annoyed by Rosalina, but for me, she's actually one of the coolest character designs Smash has ever had, and I love that it's so heavily based around getting into the perfect spacing range and chipping away at Luma before going in for the kill. She, meanwhile, plays a really cool counter spacing game, and she relies a lot on very slow walking and micro spacing and crouch moving backwards and forwards and the fact that you can't just chuck projectiles at her to deal with that and need to actually go in and figure out a way to deal with Luma, I love that. So if she's playing her micro spacing game properly and is on point with that down B button, this helps so much with making Rosalina matchups feel really interesting to me. Again, I know not everyone's going to agree, a lot of people really hate this character, but me personally, I really like watching her and fighting her. Heroes bounce. Meh. Like, it's fine. I'm not evaluating, like, his entire down special. That's a whole new world to get into. But just bounce. Like, sure, it makes sense to have in that list. It would be obviously incredibly stupid if you could just apply it to him all the time or, like, very reliably. But the fact that you can't, I guess, balances it out to a degree. Still arguably too oppressive in certain matchups, as we'll get into. I don't generally like that aspect of character design, but... I, I'm not going to put him in F tier. It's whatever. It's okay, I guess. Below okay, but not the worst thing in the world. Kazuya. That's an S tier. So, Kazuya, again, sort of in the same vein as Rosalina, plays this really cool micro-spacing back and forth kind of game. And that means that he's going to be walking a lot, but even with that... His reflector is a big commitment to use. It's double tap A, so it takes a long time to start up compared to a lot of reflectors. And the thing is, they've made his reflector a lot harder to use, but there's also a way heavier payoff for using it successfully because it has a ridiculous multiplier. So you can absolutely melt people if you successfully pull it off. And it's also just a pretty cool attack in its own right, so yeah, big fan of this one. Min Min... F tier. And that one's not really something I need to hesitate on that much. The move itself is fine. I actually think it's pretty cool. It doesn't make sense on Min Min, though. Her whole deal is that she controls more horizontal space than essentially any other character in the game, which I guess the reflector property ties into a little bit, so maybe if we were evaluating this purely as how it functions as an anti-projectile move, it would be a little higher than this. But it also gives her a ridiculously good anti-air and a very solid out-of-shield option, which, as I talked about in my Problems with Zoners video, aren't really the traits I think this kind of character should have. Now, I will say, this move was nerfed, so I think the team did recognize this to a degree. I mean, that one frame of extra startup in particular actually matters a fair amount in terms of out-of-shield options, where literally every single frame on frame Data is pretty important, but it's just not enough. This move would be pretty cool maybe somewhere else, but not on Min Min. 
Guess next up we'll do DDDs and Hail, and I think I'm gonna put an A tier on this one. I really like how this move functions in this kit. Again, giving heavyweights anti-projectile tools is really good. This is a very good anti-projectile tool. It adds a lot of style to his moves that kind of plays into his wacky character thing. And it's also just a pretty cool command grab in general. Although I'm not going to go too far into him because, spoiler alert, he may or may not be coming up in an upcoming video. Might as well do the other command grabs here. Kirby S. Like, come on, it's inhale. It is what I'd consider to be the single most important move in the series, and also just incredibly cool and fun and attractive to new players, and it just, it does everything right. I've talked about this move in an entire video, so go watch that, I guess, if you want a bit more elaboration. I will say this ranking has nothing to do with its merits as an anti-projectile move. I actually think it's pretty weak in that aspect and does drag the design of it down to a degree, but it's not enough to bring it out of this tier. Like, again, it's inhale. What more do you need? As for Wario... B tier, I guess, like, it's a command grab, and I like the fact that they gave it a little bit of healing properties, he's kind of like nourishing himself on the victim in his mouth, that's kind of funny, but in terms of just overall spark, I guess, I don't know, it's just kind of a fairly generic command grab, and once again, while the anti-projectile properties aren't nearly as limiting as Kirby, like, they're, they're not great. Ness and Lucas's bats, uh, we'll go B tier for these. I like these moves that don't take up a special move slot but still have reflector properties. I honestly wish they utilized this like a little bit more across the roster, but in terms of functionality, it's about as simple as you'd expect. And as smash attacks too, I mean, they're pretty much just regular old attacks. Nothing particularly special about them. They're PSI magnets. Now these I actually think are pretty cool. Ness I'm going to give an S rank to. In terms of the anti-projectile property, I don't really like these moves that differentiate between energy-based and physical projectiles that much because it would make sense if these moves tended to have shared characteristics in Smash, but they usually don't, so what moves PSI Magnet interacts with is actually fairly arbitrary, who says that it should interact with this one move but not this other one that functions very, very similarly. But who cares because not only does it have that property, which is kind of a cool bonus and all the move used to do, but it's also one of the sickest like combo extenders in the game, I think. I love the way this works. I love the way it interacts with his uh, floaty double jump. I love the way that it looks. Like I've talked before how I think these are like the sickest particle effects in the game, which aren't necessarily part of its design, but I mean, you can make the argument that visual design does kind of play into a move's core appeal. So I really like this one. Lucas, kind of a similar boat. I'm just going to give an A tier to this one because it's not nearly as impactful, not nearly as interesting, not nearly as utility heavy, but I mean, it's good in its own right. I do like the mm, Lucas. You know what? Now we're going to drop Lucas down to be a change of mind on that one. I'm, <laughs> I'm talking myself out of it. Villager and Isabelle's Pocket, so I'm going to put an F tier, and I'll explain why. These things don't belong anywhere near an F tier, apart from the fact that they can completely disable single-use items. So things like Link's Bomb or Diddy's Banana, these guys can just pocket them, and then the original owner cannot use them again, which I think is just way too polarizing design. I'm okay with design that makes certain moves riskier to use, and if the character could pull another one, it could even create a really interesting interaction. Like, I could throw a banana at Isabelle right now, but if she pockets it, then Isabel has a banana, and what's kind of one of my signature advantages to have, a banana in hand, gets neutralized. So I need to pick my timing really, really carefully to try and get rid of this, and that creates some really interesting tension in neutral or advantage state. As is though, Pocket just shuts down so much of these characters' core game plans in a way that I think is really unfun and also pretty unfair. Game & Watch, on the other hand, has that exact kind of interaction that I really like, that tension, and he's gonna go in A tier. So again, that arbitrary distinction between physical and energy projectiles isn't necessarily something that I think adds a lot to the game, but because they added a reflector to physical projectiles in Ultimate for Mr. Game & Watch's bucket, it's actually a pretty cool little interaction that you sort of need to know what's coming. Like, it's not much of a knowledge check for matchups, but it is a little bit of one, which I think just adds a nice cool touch to it. Then obviously for energy-based projectiles, there's that exact kind of tension that I was talking about that I wish Isabel and Villager had. I could throw a projectile right now, but it might let him fill bucket. Is that a risk worth going for? Rob, uh, C tier for rotor arm. Like, I don't even really know why it reflects projectiles. It seems pretty arbitrary and random, and apart from that, it's just kind of a move that sends you far. Like, it, there's nothing really special about it. I guess the fact that you can hold it for a little bit is 
kind of cool, but generally speaking, if it misses, you're going to throw it out for a little bit. If it connects, you're going to do the full spin. So whatever, it's not really that important. There's also one aspect of the animation, which again, I know isn't directly tied into the moves design, but it does bother me. So if you look at Street Fighter, they're willing to break the body for characters like Zangief. So his head doesn't actually make any sense to have in place here while his entire body is spinning but you just kind of accept it because it creates a stronger silhouette and looks cooler. Rob, meanwhile, literally does have the ability to spin his arms around his frame. Like, they don't even need to attach some kind of weird body breaking mechanism to him, and yet his head is still spinning with the rest of him. I don't really get that one. Mewtwo, I think I'm going to give an A to. So I've always really liked this move sort of just as a command grab and as a reflector. Like it, they're both neat, but it's never really done anything special. And the fact that you couldn't get any true combos out of it in Smash 4 when they brought him back was like pretty disheartening. In Ultimate though, if you do the aerial version at really high percents, you actually can get a forward air kill confirm on most characters, which is such a cool addition. I also really like how well this move works on platforms and in tech chase scenarios, so overall, while it's not doing anything particularly fancy, even if the flip around effect is a little bit unique, it's just such a cool, solid, satisfying feeling move to use, and I can't really think of anything wrong with it. I've been sitting here debating Zelda for a little while, but I think I think I'm willing to give her a B tier. Like, it's... It's just so bland and uninteresting as a move. Like, it's a reflector and it also has some invincibility. It's really good at protecting her and that's basically all it does. But I do have to admit that it ties really well into her design and is also really thematically appropriate for its origins in the Legend of Zelda series. So, I was kind of tempted to put it lower because it is a really boring, frustrating move to deal with, but... I think some characters are allowed to be boring and frustrating, even if I'd rather see them designed maybe a little bit differently moving forward, and in terms of that, I think it does synergize with what she's trying to do. I didn't actually plan to end it on the Marios, but I guess here we are. So, um, regular Mario will go... A? E... Mm. Yeah, A tier. Okay, I, I've made up my mind on this. So, Mario, as a reflector, it makes sense for a character like him to have it, right? So, Mario is supposed to be a jack-of-all-trades character. Now, whether he actually is a jack-of-all-trades character in Ultimate, as opposed to being evolved into a kind of bullshit kill you at any percent kind of guy, that's up for debate. Um, but certainly his origins at least are jack of all trades and a reflector ties really nicely into that. It's also a reflector that works really well because generally speaking the most common direction you're going to be holding is sideways in Smash and that means that reflectors that are activated sideways are a few frames quicker because you don't need to change your direction first. And it also has all that extra utility between the turnaround stuff, stalling in the air, being able to attach Mario to a ledge. Very jack of all trades. Now, you could make a bit of an argument that for such a template character, it might be a little bit weird for him to have this kind of odd move that does so many different things. Maybe that's a little bit overblown for a simple beginner friendly guy. But I think that just outside of that perspective and evaluating it as its own move, it works pretty well. Let's see. So. This is one of those moves that I feel like they totally could have and should have decloned from Mario at some point. It's not even as interesting as Mario because it doesn't have the air stall, and they completely redid the animation anyway, so there's really no reason that they couldn't have just changed it to something else. I'm willing to move it into B just because the decloning aspect I don't think by itself punishes it this harshly, but even outside of that, it's just kind of a less interesting, less utility heavy version of Mario's. Like, don't get me wrong, between these two characters, I actually think Dr. Mario is the one that needs the reflector more. He's the slower of them, obviously, but... I don't know, it's just not that exciting to see it twice, and also Dr. Mario, I know that he doesn't have a ton of source material to work with, but you could pick anything from Mario canon and just slap it on him and it would be a cool reference. It doesn't need to specifically be the Dr. Mario match games. Overall, looking back on this list, I think the spread is actually a little bit more optimistic than I would have initially thought going in, but a lot of them are still just, you know, not that great, and the main thing is, these are the only handful of characters that really have tools like this. So you'd think if you're going to take up what is generally a very precious special move slot, I, I know not for every single one on this list, but certainly for a lot of them, you'd think that you'd maybe have them do something a little bit more interesting with the anti-projectile aspect. 
Obviously, the much bigger deal in Smash, though, is that so many characters just don't get something like this, which I talk about much more in the, again, Problems with Zoners video. That should do it for this one, so thanks for watching, everyone. Um, this channel is going to get a little bit more active moving forward. I had to, as you can see, just completely tear down the green screen and put up some more acoustic foam. Now that that setup's done, I can just kind of turn the lights and camera on whenever I want and just start recording, so there will be a little more spontaneous stuff like this. I'm debating whether or not to keep the guitar rack in the background. I think maybe it looks a little poserish, but that is literally exactly where they were, they were just behind the green screen. I haven't moved them at all, so we'll see on that one. I'm also going to make an effort to do these kinds of companion style videos for at least a decent amount of mock rock content. It could be, you know, tie-in topics like this. It could be reading comments left on those videos. We'll have to see how that develops, but I think it could be interesting. Also, more reaction style stuff. Like, I've already missed the window on a few of these. For example, the day I'm recording this, there was a major Pokemon announcement. Um, a few reasons that this hasn't happened so far. The big one is that the channel is already eligible to apply for monetization, which was like a lot sooner than I expected so thank you for that but I wanted to make sure that more than half the content on this channel was original stuff because YouTube doesn't strictly forbid reaction videos but I think if they're going to be evaluating your channel and you don't have many videos it's just kind of a safer play to make and also I still needed to set the office up. Yeah I think that should do it for now. Let me know your thoughts on this list and new mock rock video coming pretty soon. Later people! You can even aim yourself at the side of the stage to bounce off- But he's not hitting the side of the stage. So. Maybe the guy who wrote the script knew what he meant, but clearly the guy who's actually recording this footage doesn't know what the script The archetype said. centered around maintaining space between themselves and their opponent. Zoners create a tension-filled clash between conflicting parties.